Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about subroutine and inner addressing. Subroutine is actually the way we do loops in Murray. And to understand subroutine, you need to understand inner addressing. So I think you must have seen some instructions like store i and jump i or load i. The difference between the store, jump, or load with the one with i is actually this one stands for indirect addressing. So imagine I have four memory blocks here. And for each memory block, it has its own address with the value. So the address for this block will be 0, 0, 0, 0, and the value is 1. And remember, all of these are in hexan as well. If we load 0, 0, 0, 0 and output it, it will output 1, right? Because it's loading the value of 0, 0, 0, 0 to the AC and I'll put it. But what if we do something like load i 0, 0, 0, 0? We know that the value for memory block 0, 0, 0, 0 is 1, right? So it's actually performed the other jump, the other jump here. So we will load, you will treat this value as an address and load the value of the address. This might sound a bit confusing at first. So what it does first is it will look inside. If you add an i, it will look inside the um, value of this address and treat it as the address and load the value of that address. Yeah. So actually we output two because it's loading the value of this address address right which is two okay this is actually the basic concept of indirect addressing it might still sound a bit confusing but it's okay we'll go through more examples for better understanding now we'll talk about subroutine for subroutine we usually name it like sub something like supreme with a hex zero it doesn't matter what value you put here but we usually just leave it as zero and we'll have some instructions here and ends with jump i and the name of the subroutine. So in this case, it's jump subprint, right? Jump i subprint. What we need to do this is when we call this subroutine, like we have four instructions, something here, something here, I use gen s subprint. Gen s is a special instruction for you to jump to a subroutine. So we cannot use jump for subroutine. We need to use gen s. After the computer executes this instruction, it will sort of add the address of the next instruction to subprint. Okay, so now the value, actually the value of subprint is the address of the next instruction, which is four, right? And after you execute all the instructions here, you will jump i subprint, so it's jumping to Supreme and look at its value and jump to that address. Then it will execute the instructions here because it's already jumped to here. Right? After this visual um, illustration, we will go directly to the code and do some two practices. Hi, right, so for the two practices, the first one is asking the user to input Unicode until the user enters a zero. And this zero is a hexadecimal. They will print the unit codes that the user enter. And in the main program, it will only have genus subprint and genus subread. Subread and subprint. Yeah. So we'll start out with the subread. You want to have a start address. So it's where we want to store the unit codes. They also have the other temporary variables like read from. Because the reason why we don't want to change this at the start address is because we want to keep track of the starting of the Unicode. So we need to load the start address and store it in read from. Then we can continue to, we can start letting the user input. Start input. So now the user will input something and we'll store i story in read from. The reason why we don't wanna 
um, you store is because you want to store this the Unicode that the user enter in this block. So you want to use store i. Then we want to check if it's if the user enters a zero. So skip con four hundred will perform error checking to check if the AC is zero. If it is, it will jump i subroutine. So it's ending the subroutine. If not, it will continue asking the user to input. But now we cannot put um, jump start input here. We need to because if you didn't add this reference address by one, you will continue chain like overriding the value here. So we need to add the reference by one every time the user enters the Unicode. So load reform and add the address by one and store it back. And jump back to the start input. And check this for this code. Let's try it out and I'll explain this. Yeah. Okay. So at first it jumped to this subroutine, right? And it will load the start address, which is 070, and store it in read from. So now read from is storing this 0070. And we'll like start the input. So the user will input like I will input A. In A in SQ code is 0061, right? So we stored it in read from, which is here. Yeah, it's right here. So if you didn't use store i, you store it like overwrite this value here. Since the AC is not zero, it will jump to this part. Jump continue input load reform, which is zero seven zero zero seven zero. I want to add it back one and store it back. So now it's zero zero seven zero, it's zero zero seven one, and join it back to some input. So I input a B here. So you can have this. You see, it's just storing the next Unicode here. So it's not overriding. And after I input a zero hexadecimal, it will end the code. So yeah, jump back to subread and that's it. Next, you want to work on subprint. So for subprint, it's exactly the same as um, subread actually. You want to have a temporary variable print from sub print. We will first load the start address. Oops, and we store it in um, print from, and then jump to start print. So we will load the start address is here. I want to load the value here and I'll put it. So we're going to choose load i print from. Then I'll put and load print from and add it by one. So now if it's, if the next load is a zero, it will end the print subroutine, right? So we will have the skip count for condition checking. If it's a zero, we will end the subroutine. If it's not, we will continue printing. Okay, so let's let's um, explain the code by running this. Just this is the summary part. I just input A B C and then a zero. Okay, and that's it. zero. And now we're at the subprint part. So. Supreme, Janet Supreme. Okay, so now the start address it's 
zero zero seven zero, right? So you log this address and store it in print form. So you can see the value of print form not change. So you will start printing. You first log I the print form because you want to go to this memory block here and log this value here to the AC. So now the AC is zero zero six one and output it. So if we change this, see, it outputs A. Then we will log this address, print form, this address and add it by one and store it back. So now it's 0071. For 0071, it's the other unique code, right? So we will not end this subroutine. We want to continue printing out this. So we do the same thing, A, B, C. Now the next one is zero, right? So when we add this by one, and for zero, zero seven three is a zero here. So now the AC becomes zero and it will end this subroutine. And that's it. Actually, it's a bit hard to explain subroutine, but if you look at the code for a few more times, you'll definitely get it. So maybe you can digest this code this is a code for um, inputting, and this is a code for the subprint subroutine. And that's it for this video. Thank you.